Last night, we broadcast portions of the first interview with Sam al Hassani, an American woman who went to Raqqa, Syria, the ISIS capital, with her children. She was led there by her husband, who was later killed fighting for ISIS. Now, Amna Nawaz follows up on this case, looking at the issue of Americans who fled America for the so-called caliphate. Our PBS colleagues at Frontline, in partnership with the BBC, worked with filmmaker Josh Baker over the course of 18 months to find and interview Sam al Hassani and tell her remarkable story. The al Hassani family are not the only Americans who went to land controlled by ISIS in Syria and Iraq. They're among the dozens that we know of who ventured to the caliphate since 2014. For more on their fates, I'm joined by Seamus Hughes. He's the deputy director of the Program on Extremism at George Washington University. Seamus, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about this report you put out earlier this year. It examined the experiences of families like Sam's. These are Americans who've traveled to Syria or Iraq to join ISIS. For the vast majority of them, what ends up being their fate? Uh, most of them get, if they come back, they get arrested. Uh, if they stay there, they die. Um, about 30% of the people that we looked at were killed in the battlefield. Another 40% or so are unknown. We, don't, we just don't know where they ended up. The numbers are sort of murky when we talk about Americans who actually travel to join ISIS. Why are they so murky? What do we know about Americans? Yeah, very, very murky. So the intelligence community talks about some 300 people that have attempted to or have traveled to Syria and Iraq. At the program on extremism, we were able to identify 64 individuals by true name. Um, and they go for a variety of different reasons. You know, the earlier cases, it was because of the Assad atrocities they saw on TV. Mm -hmm. The later cases was this idea of perceived religious obligation. The announcement of a caliphate was a driver for a lot of these folks. And we've seen ones and twos, but we've also seen families, at least six American families who traveled and picked up from a regular life here and went to go join the caliphate. From the ones that you looked at, you mentioned in the report, most who, most who go don't come back. But let's talk about those who do come back. When they come back to the U.S., what's their fate? What should they expect in terms of consequences? Well, most of them come back disillusioned, uh, for starters. So we've had about a dozen people return back from joining ISIS. Um, most of them got arrested uh, when they came back, so ended up in handcuffs. Some of them got 20 years. Others got home release. Uh, it ran, ran the spectrum on those individuals. A few individuals, law enforcement decided not to arrest. They either didn't have enough information to build a case, or they decided that these individuals were more useful on the outside. And how is that decision made, then? That's just prosecutorial dis discretion? That's Absolutely. It just depends on the prosecutor. And, and to be frank, it's quite ad hoc. Um, there's not a systematic way of, of intaking Americans who joined a foreign terrorist organization. Depending on what on the prosecutor, you get the material towards terrorism, which is 20 plus years, or you get another prosecutor and he decides not to bring a case. We feature the story of Sam al Hassani. As you mentioned, she's not the only one like that over there. I want to play a clip for you uh, from that same documentary and talk about it on the back end. This is Sam talking about how she sees her life now. So why are you still here and not in America? I'm not sure if it's by choice or not. Uh, I really don't want to go back. You don't want to go back to America? Not right now. But a lot of people will feel that you are choosing to keep your four children in a refugee camp rather than return to the safety of America. Yeah, you know, you're right. They can think like that. Um, but right now, I need to be able to sit and think what's best for my kids. I don't need anyone pushing me into making any decisions right now. So, Seamus, for people like Sam and her family, her children, what's the standing U.S. policy towards them? Completely all over the map. Um, it depends on it. So right now you have a number of Americans that are being held by Kurdish officials, or by Turkish officials, where it depends on, on the prosecutor and whether they decide to bring them back or not. Uh, for someone like Sam, she's probably facing some terrorism um, charges. Her children, obviously, the sins of a mother should not be the sins of the child. And so how do you reintegrate these children back into society? These are questions we haven't grappled with in U.S. government. So what happens moving forward now? I think it's going to be hard for a lot of people to imagine there are American children over there who aren't under any kind of effort to try to repatriate them or rescue them in any way. Yeah, that's a problem we're dealing with a lot of Western countries. I mean, think of France. It has 300 to 400 children who are believed to be in ISIS-controlled territory. America has a handful of people, at least a dozen children that we know of at the program of extremism, um, and each one is, is different. So you're hoping you can bring them back into a loving society, into a safety net, that you bring in mental health professionals, social workers, a loving family that can kind of bring them back into where they used to be. Um, but each case is going to be different. We're in unique territory here. What would you like to see happen next? 
I would like to see the, the children become back to the U.S. Um, I think you know we're a smart enough country to be able to figure this out, and and they've been dealing with the trauma of being in a foreign terrorist organization. Again, the sins of the mother should not be the sins of the child, and we should figure out a way to get them back into society. Seamus Hughes, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me.